behalf of the University of Miami, I would like to thank Sun Bank for its sponsorship of this highlight film. They play with a style both spirited and bold, with an intensity and electricity that befuddles opponents and delights their partisans. In 1989, the Hurricanes would take the field with those familiar attributes under decidedly new leadership. Dennis Erickson came to Miami with a reputation for building winners. For the first time, he would inherit an established program. Indeed, the Canes were already being hailed as the team of the 80s. In Erickson's debut against Wisconsin, it quickly became apparent that Miami football was in good hands. The traditionally dominant Hurricane defense throttled the hapless Badgers, then repeated the performance against California in the home opener one week later. In the first eight quarters of play, Miami defenders held their opponents to a pair of field goals. It was becoming quite clear that defense would be a bulwark of the 89 Hurricanes. On the other side of the football, Miami fans anxiously awaited the debut of yet another Erickson, quarterback Craig. No, they're not related. Yes, they share key similarities, an intuitive knowledge of the game, a gambling nature, and a lyrical love of flying footballs. In his debut, this Erickson would merely throw for more yards than his four predecessors, gentlemen named Kelly, Kozar, Testaverde, and Walsh, had done in their first starts. On the ground, Miami could still run at will. During those first two weeks, Coach Erickson's new one-back offense would score 82 points, accumulating more than 900 yards of total offense. Dennis Erickson had silenced the skeptics, but through the sheer impressiveness of the two victories, he had created a pleasant problem. If the Canes were really this good, might not the school's third national championship of the decade be possible? If the Miami offense had anything to say about it, the answer was a resounding yes. Watch closely. This is as slow as a football will ever travel in the hands of the hurricane. In 1989, quarterback Craig Erickson turned pregame promise into crunch time heroics. Craig Erickson became the sixth Hurricane quarterback to throw for over 2,000 yards in a season, completing 147 passes, 24 for touchdowns. Pure athletic ability has long been a trademark of Hurricane football and both Erickson and his outstanding core of receivers displayed remarkable talent. Number 81, Wesley Carroll, was a simply brilliant performer who led the Canes in receiving before a late season injury. In addition to his pass catching exploits, the speedy Carroll was among the nation's leaders in punt returns. As a crowd pleaser, none could compare with number three, Randall Hill. The team's fastest receiver led the club in yards per reception, averaging more than 15 per catch. Like Carroll, Randall Hill is only a junior. In fact, five of the team's top six receivers return in 1990. When Erickson needed the big catch, he looked for the amazing Dale Dawkins. His 54 receptions, seven for scores, led the team. With more than 800 receiving yards, the senior standout was a constant headache for enemy secondaries. Dale Dawkins, Sunbank's Offensive Player of the Year.
unheralded Rob Chudzinski quietly enjoyed another rock-solid campaign. The tight end was a clutch receiver and great blocker. Attributes shared by understudies number 93, Randy Bethel, and senior Dennis Kelleher. On the ground, Miami was loaded. Pound for pound, Leonard Conley was the toughest player on the team, perhaps in the entire country. Number 28 was the school's leading rusher and led all running backs in receptions. The second half of the Canes 1-2 tandem was freshman sensation Steve McGuire, who exploded late in the season. Both his number and his style bring back fond memories of Alonzo Highsmith. McGuire led the team in touchdowns with 10. For pure speed out of the backfield, the Canes could count on number 21, Quicksilver Alex Johnson. The third year speedster along with fellow junior Shannon Crowell added unprecedented depth to a star-studded backfield. In 1989, the Hurricane offense would average 454 yards per game, the second highest in school history. In week three, Miami would remain perfect, throttling Missouri 38-7. Thus prepared, they would now face the first major challenge of the Erickson era, on the road against Michigan State. Midway through the first quarter, the Hurricane offense loses a vital component. Craig Erickson goes out with an injury. Backup signal caller, Gino Toretta, is thrown into the breach. Toretta's debut before 76,000 Spartan fanatics is pressure packed. Late in the half, Toretta finds Wesley Carroll for a game-tying touchdown. The overflow crowd is temporarily silenced. Silenced, that is, except for a small island of orange lost in a sea of Kelly Green. Encouraged by Toretta's game effort, the Kane defense goes to work. The second half will be a Michigan State nightmare. The Spartans can manage only a field goal in the final two stanzas against an enraged Hurricane 11. As Kenny Berry and his mates celebrate, Miami's Carlos Huerta prepares for his moment in the spotlight, a game-clinching 52-yard field goal attempt. It's down, it is kicked, it is high, this one is not... It's good! He got it over the bar! I don't believe that one! Huerta's career best kick is worthy of a bow. The third leading scorer in Miami history has capped win number four. Defense, the name of the game. Nobody plays it better. <laughs> Number 57, middle linebacker Bernard Tiger Clark was the inspirational leader of a defense that was quite simply the finest in college football, the greatest in school history. Miami led the nation in scoring defense and total defense. From inside tackle to deep safety, this unit was strength upon strength. <laughs> Number 49, Maurice Crum, led the team in tackles for the second straight year, narrowly edging out number 38, underrated Rick Newbill. Hurricane secondary overcame the early season loss of senior Bobby Harden. Number six, Kenny Berry, picked off four passes during the year. 
A quartet of underclassmen made big contributions in 1989. Number 16, cornerback Roland Smith, led the team in interceptions. Number 47, Ryan McNeil. And number two, Charles Farms, figure to be fixtures in the secondary next season. The fourth man was strong safety, Early Brown, who filled in admirably for the injured heart. The key to good pass coverage is the play of the defensive line. And this defensive line was something special. Number 58, defensive end Willis Pugis, and number 67, second team All-American Russell Maryland, were two big reasons why this front was considered perhaps the best in college football history. Number 63, Jimmy Jones, and number 96, All-American Cortez Kennedy, were rock solid inside. Kennedy had a sensational year. His efforts were augmented by the performance of number 94, Consensus All-America Greg Mark. Mark led the team in sacks, showcasing both size and speed, performing with a fury that characterized the UM defense. After the win at East Lansing, the Canes would go on to record five victories in their next six outings, allowing only six touchdowns during that span. Greg Mark was a major reason for the overall ineffectiveness of Hurricane opponents. Greg Mark, Sunbank's Defensive Player of the Year. A final note. In 1989, punter Tim Kalau and Mates set an NCAA record, allowing a season total of just two net yards on punt returns. It was this kind of intensity that propelled Miami toward week number 11 and a football game of cosmic proportions. Well, the Notre Dame win uh, proved that uh, this new coaching staff could win the big game that it could play with anybody in the country. And the game be between the two maybe best programs in the country is always an outstanding rivalry. And, of course, this year it lived up to what everybody thought it would. We played extremely well and, and had a great win, probably the, the best win in my coaching career. After the way we lost last year, I, I felt we had to play maybe at our top, or maybe even above ourselves, just to, just to get that bad taste out of our mouth from last year, and uh, I think we did that. So here it was at last, the showdown. Thirteen months earlier, a disputed loss to arch-rival Notre Dame had cost Miami its second consecutive national championship. The Fighting Irish had claimed that crown and entered tonight's contest as the number one team in the land. But history belonged to the Hurricanes. Six times, Miami teams had played number one during the 80s. Six times, the Canes had won. Tonight, before the largest crowd ever to see an event in the Orange Bowl, Hurricane defenders vowed to extend that remarkable record. In the first quarter, the supposedly invincible Irish running game was stopped dead in its tracks. Notre Dame was forced to punt three times during the opening period. The Miami front wall was literally impenetrable. Tiger Clark was understandably pleased with early results. But what about Notre Dame's air game? The fabled Rice to Rocket combo. Rice rolling back to pass. Rice is looking, fires it deep. There's your bomb for the rocket. It is intercepted by Roland Smith. Roland Smith intercepted at the 11, his sixth interception of the year. On the final play of the first quarter, Miami opens up a 10 point lead. Back is Erickson on the straight back drop. Throws it deep over the middle. Dock is caught. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Miami! 65 yards! Ex 
extricating himself from his adoring legions, Dale Dawkins watches his defensive counterparts go to work, although the Irish fight back to tie the score. It's only a temporary respite. Tiger Clark will see to that. Right back to throw. For the Hurricane offensive line, this play will come to symbolize the entire season. Throughout the year, they have gelled in the crucible of combat. Center Bobby Garcia, guards Rod Holder, Darren Handy, and Lewis Cristobal, tackles Mike Sullivan, Leon Searcy. Just seconds remain in the first half. Third down and goal at the five, ball at the left hash mark. Miami going to our right, the turn, the give, the play action, McGuire, touchdown, standing up! McGuire's score sends a message to the nationwide television audience. Miami, heretofore known more for dazzle than domination, is manhandling the fighting Irish. In the third quarter, the script goes from far-fetched to unbelievable. Miami converts a third and 44 to highlight an amazing 22-play drive. Four minutes remain in the third quarter. The visitors have yet to touch the ball in the second half. This series will be forever immortalized in Miami football legend as simply the drive. For all practical purposes, this game is history. Notre Dame will not score again. Amazingly, the Fighting Irish will end the decade O for the Orange Bowl. The Canes' 32nd consecutive home win is also their fifth straight Orange Bowl victory over Notre Dame. How sweet it is. For Dennis Erickson, his staff, and players, this is a moment to save it. It's a testament to the foresight of athletic director Sam Jankovic and a possible prelude to a national title. The U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl, New Orleans, January 1st, 1990. The Hurricanes take on Alabama and a crimson tide of 70,000 Bama faithful. A Miami victory, coupled with a Colorado loss in the Orange Bowl, means a national championship. The Canes aim to fulfill their part of the scenario. Miami supporters stake their claim, and the Hurricane defense concurs. If the Canes appear just slightly superhuman to their harried foes, the conclusion is quite natural. As is their custom, Erickson and company will score first. They will do so with a well-balanced attack that stretches the outman defense. Steve McGuire's touchdown stakes UM to a lead it will never relinquish. Although Bama manages to tie the score, Miami offense strikes back in the second stanza. Second down and 10. Erickson the throw. Has the time. Throwing end zone. Wesley Carroll. Touchdown Miami. Wesley Carroll's touchdown reception results in a six-point advantage. Alabama will counter with a field goal. But Miami immediately answers with an impressive nine-play drive, all of it on the ground. Alex Johnson carries for 23 yards to the Bama 17. Two plays later, it's Leonard Conley inside the five. At the Alabama three, Erickson to Johnson behind Sullivan. Sully lost his footing and Johnson scores.
after intermission, Hurricane defenders turn up the heat. Alabama nets just 19 yards in the third quarter, and Miami unleashes its prolific air game. Final with a third down and three. They're outside the Alabama 11. Harrison to play action to throw, and so a touchdown! Rod Kaczynski! Sam Jenkins just snapped the suspended. Rob Kaczynski's 11-yard touchdown signals the death knell for tied comeback hopes. Desperately, Alabama takes to the air with familiar results. Charles Farms makes the play that sets up the game-clinching drive. Meanwhile, electrifying news from the Orange Bowl. Colorado has lost. Miami is just 15 minutes away from a national title. On the second play of the final period, Randall Hill runs to daylight, positioning his mates to capture the school's third national championship of the decade. Later, as Randy Bethel sheds the last Bama defender, the Canes take their rightful place as the team of the 80s. Dennis Erickson has won a national title in his first year, a feat accomplished only one other time in the annals of college football. Even as the Superdome reverberates with the sights and sounds of victory, another decade looms, replete with a host of rapacious opponents taking dead aim at number one. The Canes will answer the challenge. Count on it. Miami football, simply the best.